going to give you just five levels of relationship with the Holy Spirit based on a relationship that Jesus had with the Holy Spirit. The first degree of our relationship with the Holy Spirit where all of us start is when we get born. When we get born, you can write down born again. When we get born again, we this is where our relationship with the Holy Spirit begins. Now actually the Holy Spirit is with us before we get born again. To bring us to Jesus Christ but the relationship with him begins when we get born again just like Jesus was born by the Holy Spirit you and I when we get saved we get born by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit begins to live in us can somebody say amen so the Holy Spirit begins to live in us. One of the reasons Jesus lived a supernatural life was because he had a supernatural birth. When he came to Nicodemus and he said, Nicodemus told him, he says, Jesus, I've noticed that you are, um, you do incredible things. The, the miracles, amazing. The teachings, amazing. When you teach, demons come out. Awesome. And Jesus almost interrupts the whole thing and says, unless you're born of water and spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of heaven. You're almost like, Jesus, didn't you just hear what he said? Jesus was trying to explain to Nicodemus the reason my life is so supernatural is because my birth was supernatural. See salvation is not getting a ticket to heaven when you die. Salvation is an entrance into a kingdom of God when you live. Salvation is when the Holy Spirit gives me a new birth to qualify me for a supernatural life. Salvation is not just a little insurance card in the glove box of my theological preferences when I die. So in case there is heaven that I don't go into hell. Salvation, Jesus says, he says, unless you're born of water, which is physical birth, and the spirit, which is supernatural birth, salvation, he says, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus wasn't talking about heaven in heaven. He was talking about the kingdom now that you and I can walk into. Your supernatural birth when you get saved is what opens the door for the supernatural life that you have with the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not model to us what God can do on earth. He modeled to us what a man submitted to the Holy Spirit can do on earth. Some people think, well, Jesus walked on water. That was God. Well, why did he say we can do what he did and more? We can't be God. No matter how hard we humble ourselves, submit ourselves to God, we'll never be God. But we can be like Jesus because he demonstrated on earth what a man like you and I who submits himself to the Holy Spirit can achieve on this earth. When you get born again by the Holy Spirit, this is where your relationship with the Holy Spirit begins. Number two is when we get filled with the Holy Spirit. Filled with the Holy Spirit is Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was water baptized and John the Baptist uh, baptized Jesus in the Jordan. The Holy Spirit came upon Jesus. We don't see Jesus actually speaking in tongues here, but we see a Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus. It's very interesting to see that Jesus was not filled in the Holy Spirit praying at home. He was in a service where John the Baptist who had a smaller ministry than Jesus, who did not have miracles in his ministry, who was, um, who was Baptist. <laughs> that he was baptizing people, not saying Baptist at the nomination. And Jesus goes to, let me just say it to you plainly, it's like this, Jesus the charismatic, because he had miracles, he had the gifts, he goes into a service that was not like his service that he's going to have and the Holy Spirit touches him there. You know, we must understand one thing. For us to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, you have to learn to honor the people God uses, even those you don't disagree, you disagree with. Even those who may not be reaching the fullest potential in the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't go to John and say, hmm, John, your diet is bad. You're eating locusts. What kind of madness is that? John your dress code is terrible you're dressed up like what is this Jesus didn't come to John and said John you don't heal people John you don't cast out demons John your ministry is not good enough see this is what most of us do and that's why the Holy Spirit cannot use us because we know what we're called to do and so we think that our job is to go put everybody down but Jesus comes to John and said John uh, can you baptize me John says, no, 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 Jesus, you, 
you are greater are you so great I'm not even worthy to tie your shoelace it's not even no I can't baptize you Jesus says I know John I know I'm greater you know you're greater high five that's good you need to baptize me wow wow most of us we would never do that we would come to John and say John I need to meet with you for coffee afterwards there's a lot of things you need to change <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having your ministry greater than John's but the Holy Spirit did not come on Jesus when he was praying the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus when he went to John and said John baptize me sometimes we get I get personally attacked because they say things like why are you following other ministers first of all I don't follow other ministers I follow Jesus but why do I listen to other ministers I always do listen to other ministers I preach I meet with other pastors in town who are not like us met this Friday with a wonderful pastor from New Vintage a few weeks ago from Bethel Church pastor C3 pastor who whose ministries are different than even where we are going to be you know I listen to podcasts read the books and people say why do you always do that and you encourage us to do that because there is a degree of the presence of the Holy Spirit that will not be available to you if you don't respect other people that God is using that's different than you if you're only able to listen and respect those that that just literally tickles your ear it's just like you you you're still with God but there is a limitation there see the spirit of Pharisees is this the spirit of Pharisees says I honor Moses Moses is the man of God Jesus don't understand him but oh God used me to be a prophet for tomorrow see when Moses was alive everybody hated him and no everybody started loving Moses when Moses died we love prophets that are dead kill the prophets that are alive and hope and wish to be prophets tomorrow we're all like that you come you come to church you say Catherine Kuhlman was a mighty woman of God Vlad Smith Wigglesworth the mighty man of God except he was rejected from most charismatic churches because you know what Smith Wigglesworth did who raised 32 people from the dead he brought dead person on a stage and told them to walk <laughs> parents with kids ran and they said this is nonsense you know what Smith Wigglesworth did? He walked in the kitchen and people dropped on the floor by the power of God. And people said, this is crazy. This is not good. But when Smith Wigglesworth died, everybody said, Smith Wigglesworth, mighty man of God. We always do that. And so Jesus doesn't want us to be like that. He wants us to be like he was. He came to John and he didn't honor John when John was dead. He says, John, God is moving through you. Baptize me. Let's be students of the Holy Spirit, not scholars of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody shout amen? amen. The level three. When Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, level three is Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit. After you get filled, you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit begins to give you promptings. Now it's interesting, Jesus wasn't led by the Holy Spirit into a crusade or a service. He was led by the Holy Spirit to fast and to pray. When I was younger, I remember I even fasted and said, Lord, I want to hear your voice until God started to speak. And I said, Lord, please, a little bit less of your voice now. Don't speak to me as much. Because see, when I thought is that when God will speak to me, he will tell me which real estate to buy in Trace Cities, which has gold mine. I thought when he will speak to me, he will right away point out at the age of 16 who my wife is going to be. I wanted God to tell me you know what is gonna be what I'm gonna do like in you know 15 years or 20 years down the road but when God started to speak to me he said Vlad could you apologize to your mom for not cleaning up your room for three days in a row and I said Lord no don't, don't talk to me about this stuff talk to me about deep things of the spirit the mysteries of the kingdom of God that the whole counsel of God God says yes this is my counsel pick up a vacuum and vacuum that room that your mom be telling you to vacuum for so long I don't want to hear that about Lord It's not about hearing God it's about heeding God that makes all the difference amen and many times the Holy Spirit does not start speaking with this person needs to be healed this person needs to be healed he will start speaking to you about things that involve your self-denial you get on your knees you say Lord speak to me and he says you know what it's been six months for some it's been six years you haven't fasted you should start fasting so I'll rebuke this in Jesus name God speak to thy servant because thy servant heareth thee God leads 
sometimes starts leading you into wilderness before he leads you to a mountaintop and don't rebuke it and don't shut it down if it aligns with the word of God it might be the Holy Spirit leading you and you need to be obedient to that amen, amen. the fourth step is when Jesus was in the wilderness he overcame Satan in the wilderness in Matthew in Luke chapter 4 verse 4 now you may say but Vlad there was Holy Spirit wasn't mentioned there uh, you're saying that the Holy Spirit how does that help me to know the Holy Spirit listen to this very carefully it will help you so much the Holy Spirit was not mentioned in the wilderness temptation of Jesus yet he was there why when you don't feel the Holy Spirit you have to stand on what the Holy Spirit said in his word that's where you find the Holy Spirit and that is how Jesus overcame Jesus overcame Satan and his hardest times is when you don't feel the Spirit you can find him in his word Jesus who felt the Holy Spirit come upon him Jesus who felt the Holy Spirit lead him into the wilderness and then he goes into the wilderness and there is no more mention of the Holy Spirit and Jesus doesn't get distracted and say God you left me he doesn't say Holy Spirit where is you where are you Holy Spirit help me the Bible says Jesus begins to quote the scriptures Holy Spirit wrote see God's Spirit will always lead you to a place that only his word will get you through God will never lead you God will not give you so much of his presence that makes you unnecessary to rely on the word of God the Holy Spirit wrote the Word of God and when you cannot feel Him in worship, you find Him in the Scriptures. When you cannot feel Him during a sermon, you find Him in the Word of God because He hides Himself in His Word when you don't see Him, don't feel Him or don't experience Him in your wilderness. And that is how you overcome. Can somebody shout Amen. I cannot tell you how many times in my personal life I sense the leading of the Holy Spirit to give up for example uh, the, the account comes to my mind is last year when I gave a vehicle away it was the second vehicle within about four months and I felt so great I knew it was God leading me until the next day I recognized that I don't have money I had $150 left on my checkings account the second thing both of us didn't have cars me and my wife and uh, and I did not want to go and get it from a dealer on the payment so and I said great I'm just gonna call a few of my guys that I know who have dealerships and I'm gonna tell them that I have a problem hopefully God will speak to them like he spoke to me to give a car God will speak to them to give me a car <laughs> simple solution give and you receive I'm like I'm, I gave on Sunday I'm gonna get it back on Tuesday that's gonna be the fastest harvest ever received on this planet and I will experience that I called one guy on Monday I called another guy on Tuesday I called third guy on Wednesday they all wanted to sell me a particular car for about 45 to 60 thousand dollars I was like sorry somebody else is calling me I gotta go I was like sixty thousand dollars and this is where by Thursday I started getting depressed and I said Lord you didn't speak to me about giving a car why did I give a car in the first place my dad told me it was a stupid idea should have not done it should have listened to my father and I said God nobody's giving me a car and this is where I started to Holy Spirit that presence Lord that I felt when I decided that where is that presence and I got on my knees I turned on my favorite music and I started to create those same feelings and they were not there and for two weeks I'm not exaggerating two weeks after three o'clock I come home I laid in the bonus room over there and cried my eyes and said God where are you why did you forsake me and God didn't speak nothing the only way I got through that point is I realized God leads me what only what he says in his word will get me through I started to rely on the fact God will never forsake me I started to rely on the fact that God never promised to give me a car back and I didn't give it to get a car back I gave it because I felt leading of the Spirit and I wanted to bless a people God started to deal with my motives and I came out of that and I said Lord now I'm gonna go find another way gonna find a car and everything but I didn't do it to get a car God started to clean up with his word my motives and my things and eventually I have a car better than I had before my wife has a car better than what she had before but it's not about the cars it's about going through a season where only God's Word only God's Word begins to clean you up begins to change things inside and it's not gonna be what you feel it's what you feed on in that season that will get you through somebody shout Amen
Are you with me? So this, the, the five, number five, is you get empowered by the Holy Spirit. So after you go through some things and the Holy Spirit helps you with using His Word, He empowers you. After Jesus came out of the wilderness, we see that Jesus was empowered and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He started to touch the life of Jesus and Jesus started to minister with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, without the Holy Spirit's anointing, Jesus wouldn't be able to accomplish anything that he accomplished in this world. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot fulfill your calling. Now, Jesus' calling was to die for the world. Your calling is to raise up your family. Your calling is to be a good husband. Your calling is maybe a businessman. Maybe you're in this room today. Your calling is to raise your grandchildren. Your calling might be to, to preach, to lead a home group. When I tell you something, without the Holy Spirit, you cannot fulfill your calling the way God wants it to be fulfilled. You put the Holy Spirit aside and says, I don't have time for you. I don't understand. You're confusing. You're kind of crazy. And all the crazy people are going to talk about the Holy Spirit. I want to stay. I just want to believe there is a God. Don't know who Allah, Buddha, but there is one. And I'm going to stick with that and that's it. But you say, I don't want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. Saul one day did that. He, he disobeyed the Holy Spirit by dishonoring his mentor. And the Holy Spirit withdrew from him and something happened. The Bible says demons started to attack him. Brian, I want you to turn off all the lights in this sanctuary, including the lights on the top. Quickly. One, two, and three. All of them. Everywhere. And the side lights as well. Have you noticed the moment the lights were turned off, like in a split second actually, the darkness came in. Anybody notice that? Mm -hmm. Nobody invited the darkness. I only asked them to turn off the lights. I didn't invite the darkness. Where did the darkness come from? It's always been here, huh? <laughs> Absence of light created right away the darkness. Turn on the lights, please. You don't have to invite the darkness. It will always come. You only have to invite the light. When you reject the light, you invite the darkness. That's how it works. When we reject the Holy Spirit, the darkness is always there. When you say, I don't want the Holy Spirit. I don't have time for the Holy Spirit. I ignore the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what happens. The light gets turned off. The demons of pornography, they quickly appear. The demons of drinking, they quickly appear. All kinds of addictions of depression, they quickly appear. Demonic is always there and it's waiting for you to switch off the, the switch. That's why relationship with the Holy Spirit is not a luxury for us. It's not just, well, my life is good, but the Holy Spirit will be greater. This is life with the Holy Spirit. And without it, we are exposed to the darkness. I am and so are you. The best of us will see the worst in us when we reject the relationship with the presence of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen?